Hello again. Welcome to episode 57 of Dinner from the Dining Car. Now, I know I skipped a week uh, not making a video, but last weekend we had no water in our building. So we couldn't use our sinks, we couldn't get water. We were kind of up the creek. So I took last week's video and we're going to make it today. Today is... Uh, February 27th, 2022. Today we're making a recipe called the uh, uh, Outer Rim Bisque. Now, railroads not only fed their passengers, they also had to feed their crews. And uh, this one was a recipe on the Joliet, Elgin, and Eastward Railway, otherwise known as the Outer Loop, uh, or Outer Edge, because it ran from north of Chicago, south of Chicago, and then eastward from there. Uh, this is one of the things they fed their crews, and it was so popular, the crews raved about it, that other railroads basically said, hey, can we have the recipe for that so we can feed our crews? It turned out to be quite popular. Uh, in fact, when the uh, railroad gave up passenger service in the early 1900s, they would still attach a dining car to their freight, freight trains so they could feed their crews this. And here's what you're going to need. You're going to need two pounds ah, of ground beef. You're going to need now, when they made this, they served it on either egg noodles, farfalla, or rotelle. We're serving it on rotelle. Oops, let me get that in there so everybody can see it. You'll, so you'll need a pound of rotelle. Now, you're going to make this according to the directions on the box. You'll also need two relatively small to medium onions. You're going to need two cans of condensed tomato soup. You're also going to need milk because you're going to take one of the cans of the condensed soup and when you put it in, you're going to take a, a whole can of milk and stir it in there too. You're also going to need salt and pepper to taste. Now, you can also do things like add fresh herbs into it if that's your, your inclination. Again, the pasta, you can serve it basically on whatever pasta you want. You're also going to need a casserole dish because uh, once you ground the, the beef and cook the pasta and stir in the soup, or the ground beef you're going to brown with the onions in it. You're going you're to chop these up coarse, not too fine. And then once you have this all together and stirred in your largest skillet, you're going to put the pasta cooked into your casserole dish. And then you're going to pour this on top of the casserole dish. If you want to top it with cheese, I guess you could. And then you're going to bake it in a 375 degree oven for how long? Let me see. I forgot the instructions there for a second, folks. Yeah, 30 minutes. You're going to cook this in 30, 375 degree oven for 30 minutes. So that, believe it or not, is everything you need for this recipe. It's going to be very simple to make. Hopefully it's as delicious as what the history books tell me it is. And uh, hope that we'll enjoy it. Well, that's it for now. And we'll get back to you when we start cooking. Okay, folks, we're about to get started. Now, we've already cooked the pasta. It's, uh, it's done. Let me just show you here. That's just the pound package of Rotelli pasta. Don't worry if it's cooled off and kind of stuck together, because it's all going to go in the roasting pan anyway, which is right here. So we're going to go ahead and dump that now. Uh, as you can see, it's still pretty hot. 
Oh my. That looks yummy. That, I can smell that yummy already. Now, I've also taken the two cans of condensed soup and one can of milk and whisked it together. This is going to be the sauce that goes on top of the ground beef and the onions, which I have also chopped up relatively rough. Now we're going to take a little, oops, move that puppy out of the way, that's not going to work. We're going to take a little cooking spray, spray the skillet so our ground beef doesn't uh, stick or anything because I'm using an extremely lean ground beef here. I'm using uh, 93.7. That's really lean stuff. Anyway, I've got the oven preheated to 375. Okay. Hey, Tony, how about you turn on the flame? Oh, that was nice. Pop that in there. Grab the other pound of ground beef. Now, I, I like to get my ground beef from a little place called Grocery Outlet. It's a small chain of discount grocery stores. And they have this absolutely wonderful grass-fed ground beef from a place called Thomas Farms for $4.99 a pound. So I'm going to give them a little plug. And by all means, if you have a grocery outlet by you and you're worrying, wondering about their meat, this ground beef is off the charts. Okay, and into the ground beef while it's browning. I have to chop it up a little bit. Pop go your onions. that camera a little closer so you can actually see this stuff cooking. Kind of move it down here. There we go. That's a better camera shot. Oh, that's even better. There you go, folks nice little view and you'll just stir this up brown it up really good it may take a couple minutes then once this uh, browns up and sweats the onions a little you're going to now this is two small onions and uh, I'm using white onions. You could use yellow onions if you like, or if you're really interested in some interesting flavor and can get them in your area, try Vidalia onions. Those are nice and sweet, but this I'm just using white onions. And we'll just let this brown up a little bit. While we've got a few minutes, we can just chit chat. <laughs> Now once this browns up, we have to take our sauce and pour it on top of the meat and then give it a fair bit of salt and pepper for, for taste. Now the only thing wrong with this big of a skillet is it takes a little while to heat up. Maybe I should have preheated the skillet. And because it's going to take a little longer. Oh crap, I'm getting ground beef all over the place. And I went and cleaned the stove before I did this, which means I'm going to have to clean it afterwards. Oh well.
pasta is definitely done and actually tastes pretty good. And I have greased the crap out of this uh, roasting pan. Now, you could use a casserole dish, but unfortunately, I don't have a really good medium sized casserole dish. I have two quart casserole dishes, I have one and a quart, half quart casserole dishes, and then I have a five quart casserole dish. And this requires only about a two and a half to three quart casserole dish. So, this, however, the roasting pan, well, if you followed my videos, you've seen me make uh, chicken cacciatore in it, you've seen me make Swiss steak in it. You've seen me make more than a few things in this here roasting pan. Okay, ground beef is starting to brown up. We just need to sweat those onions a little more. Again, I have very lean ground beef. If you want, you know, and you can uh, go with an 80-20, although I wouldn't because that's an awful lot of fat for this. But I went with a 93-7. Yeah, the onions are starting to sweat down a little bit. Beef's browning up. As you can see, it makes a nice little pile of food. I can understand why they say this is, the history books all tell me this is a very hearty dish. Let's just let that simmer for a minute to brown up a little more. And this is actually, this is actually called outer belt bisque. I may have mispronounced it in, mistyped, mislabeled it in the uh, opening segment. It's the outer belt bisque from the Elgin, Joliet, and Eastern. And if it's as good as they say it is, it smells delicious already. Okay, the beef is browned. The onions have sweated down a little bit. Again, these are coarse sized chunks, so they may take a little longer to. Then you pour in your soup. This is two cans of condensed tomato soup. And once you put the two cans in a bowl, you put in one can of milk. Now, if you don't like cream of tomato soup and you think it's repulsive, just put in a can of water. But uh, the recipe calls for a can of milk. So, by gosh, that's what we're using. And you basically stir this around real good. You end up with a creamy, tomatoey lump of something. Stir this around, make sure it gets really well mixed. Now, now is when you want to hit it with your salt and pepper. There's no real uh, measurements on the salt and pepper. It's kind of up to the individual how salty and peppery do you want it. And I just went with my usual four pepper combo. 
because I don't want to use garlic pepper because I don't want that additional garlic flavoring. And stir that around. And you kind of bring this to a bit of a boil. I gotta sample that. I gotta get me a sample of that. Oh my! Oh, that is much better than I anticipated. Mm. Mm. Oh, heck yes. Okay. So bring it to a boil, which it's now doing. So, whoops. Kind of goofed there. Now, what we do, again, the oven is preheated to 375. So now what we do is take this, dump it uh, on top of your pasta, spread it around, make sure you get all those good little lumps. Oh man, I'm developing a little arthritis and this is really starting to hurt holding this pan this way. For those of you later on in years, I think you'll shake your heads and agree when I say getting older is not for the faint of heart. Anyway, there you have it. Now it goes into the oven for 30 minutes and if you'll notice it's a pretty good sized pot of food this should nor this should easily feed six to eight people it's one 375 degree oven uncovered mind you ah there and we'll set the timer for 30 minutes And there you have it, guys. We will be back in, well, that's hot, in about half an hour. We'll see you then. Okay, guys, now we're going to get it out of the oven. Oh, walking in front of the shop. Bad, 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 bad. It's been half an hour. Oh my goodness. Oh, that smells insane, guys. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, walking in front of the shot again. Idiot. There. Now we'll plate some up. And you can see it plated up. Move the camera. Zoom it in just a bit. What did I do with my spoon? There it is. Oh, I'm giving it a little stir here. Hot out of the oven. Wow, that is hot out of the oven, guys. Oh, that smells enchanting. Boy, this I tell you, this railroad's cruise, if they ate this, they ate pretty well. Look at that that looks yummy let me get a plate for judy that looks you know it kind of reminds me of a casserole my mother used to make a long time ago yeah i think if we had put some cheese on this it would have been like cheeseburger pie And there's a little serving for Judy. There's a little serving for Judy. Well, there you have it, guys. 
This is the Elgin Joliet and Eastern Railways Outer Belt Bisque. This is what they used to serve to their train crews. But I would imagine some passengers, if they smelled this, would have wanted some of that too. Anyway, that's it. We're going to eat our dinner now. Uh, that's it for this week. If you have any questions, oh well, if you watch this video, please smash the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, that's it for this week. If you have any questions, comments, want a copy of this recipe, email me at dinnerfromthediningcar at yahoo.com. In the meantime, have yourselves a wonderful week, and we'll see you next weekend. Bye-bye.